to go through the course outline so that we can understand what we are supposed to cover in this unit. We have a number of topics that you are supposed to cover. And, uh, from the course outline, the first topic that we are supposed to cover is the introduction part. And at the introduction part, we are supposed to look at the definition of key terms, macroeconomic models, and we look at the importance of macroeconomics. Then we are supposed to look at the major goals of macroeconomic policy. And then lastly, we are supposed to look at the limitations of macroeconomics. That will mark the end of the introduction part. Now the second topic that we will look at is the national income output and expenditure. Now under the national income, we are supposed to look at the circular flow of income. Then we look at the approaches to measurement of national income we we'll look at the gdp and its related concepts then we we'll look at difficulties in measuring the national income the factors determining the size of the economy's national income will also be discussed then we we'll look at the uses of national income accounting and finally we we'll look at the national income and the social welfare. So that will mark the end of topic two. So the third topic that we will discuss is consumption, savings, and investment. So we we'll look at the consumption function. We we'll look at the savings function. Theories of consumption will be discussed and determinants of consumption and spending. We look at the types of investment, determinants of investment, and then the theories of investment. So the fourth topic is the Keynesian model of income determination. We look at the Keynesian model of income determination. And under that, we look at the equilibrium, the goods market. We also look at the IS equilibrium. We look at the IS equation and the curve. Then we will discuss the disequilibrium income. Then we will also have some calculations on the multiplier concept. Paradox of thrift, and then inflationary and deflationary caps will also be covered under that topic. So the fifth topic is the money market. Under the money market, we are required to cover money and its functions. We will also look at the properties of money creation of money, the financial institutions. So you look at demand for money, money supply. We will also cover equilibrium in the money market. We look at the general equilibrium. And then finally, we look at the open economy. And then of course, we'll have the extended I SLM model. Our next topic, which is topic six, is the foreign the foreign exchange markets. We look at the definitions, exchange rate regimes, and we look at the J curve phenomenon. 
look at the methods used to correct trade deficit, and uh, finally, we look at the effect of devaluation per currency. The next topic, which is the second, which is the last topic actually, is unemployment and inflation. We look at unemployment and inflation. And the, the first part of this topic will look at unemployment, where we look at the definitions of unemployment, types of unemployment. We'll also look at the causes of unemployment. And finally, the policies for curing unemployment. So we will finish that topic by looking at inflation. And then we will look at the definitions of inflation, forms of inflation, types of inflation, and of course we look at the measurement of inflation, causes of inflation, effects of inflation, and finally the remedies of inflation. So generally that is what we look at under macroeconomics theory one. Now we go back to one part, that is topic one. And, uh, we're supposed to look at what we cover in topic one. Macroeconomics is the branch of economics that attempts to analyze and explain the interrelationship between aggregate variables such as output, employment, interest rates, money, and the prices in the economy. Now, these are the key variables that we determine economic activities and the level of national income in the economy. So in simple terms, macroeconomics analyzes the performance of the economy as a whole. So whatever we'll be discussing under the introduction to macroeconomic theory simply covers how the economy performs. All the variables that are under consideration in the economy covered under the introduction part of macroeconomic theory. Now, the introduction topic has the following objectives. So by the end of this topic, we should be able to understand the basic concepts and the scope of macroeconomics. We'll be able to explain macroeconomics and you should also be able to discuss the macroeconomic goals to appreciate the importance of macroeconomics. And finally, you should also understand the limitations of macroeconomics. Now, we can look at the concepts that we normally use in macroeconomics. Mix. So before we can proceed, there are quite a number of concepts that are important. We need to understand before we can proceed. So we have talked about economic theory. That is the first concept that you need to understand. What is economic theory? So economic theory is a box of tools which an economist construct that facilitates the study of the real world. So we normally construct models 
and uh, those models normally help us to understand how the real world operates or performs. So economic models, the economic models simply refers to simple explanations of how the economy works. So we have various explanations that have been developed by economists to explain how the economy works. And those simple explanations is what we refer to as base. Now the other concept that is important is macroeconomic models simply help in forecasting the future trends of the economy. So the models are simply explanations, sort of theories of how the economy works. So the so-called simplified explanations of the real world. Now in economics, we normally deal with quite a number of, of models. These models normally help us to understand how the economy works. Now, as we move forward, we will be able to see some of the models that we use, like in the case of uh, estimation the national income, we normally use a number of models. And uh, when we want to understand what will happen in the economy, if some of the variables in the model change, so we'll be able to understand as we move forward. Now, the macroeconomic models help in forecasting the future trends of the economy. So you have heard of forecasting so if you want to know whether the economy will grow next year. So you can use those models to forecast. And then a good model improves the understanding and of course, forecast and decision making by policy makers. What are the aims or goals of macroeconomic policy? Now, the macroeconomic policy seeks to achieve the following goals. So the first one is full employment. Employment is very necessary. Employment is very necessary in an economy. Unemployment is where some resources are not optimally utilized and are lying idle. So full employment is favored because the greater the level of employment, the greater the amount of income and resources available in the economy. The second objective is price stability. So this is very important in any economy. If we have a high level of inflation, that will be harmful to the economic activities. So inflation is simply a general increase in the price level. So if the prices of goods and services increases, rapidly, so that, that will affect the economic activity. So inflation should be avoided at all costs so that prices remain stable and predictable over time. Now the reason is inflation normally affects other people more adversely than others. During inflationary periods, 
those who are rich, they normally become more richer. And those who are poor, they become extremely poor. And therefore, price is necessary in an economy. The other objective or macroeconomic goal is economic growth. The economic growth takes place when the real output increases more rapidly than the increase in population. So if the increase in goods and services in an economy grows faster than the, the population growth, then we can say that we have achieved economic growth. Because this is an objective in any country, so countries seek to grow their economies. And by doing this, they will ensure that there is an increase in goods and services that are produced in the economy. Now, the last objective of macroeconomic theory is external balance. So if a country has a favorable balance of payment with these foreign exchange reserves will increase and hence it can import the much needed capital for investment and other things that are necessary for economic activities. An favorable balance of payment would lead to an outflow of foreign exchange to finance the trade deficit. Now, what we refer to as the balance of payment, this is simply the difference between imports and what? Exports. So if we import more, it means we will use quite a number of our foreign reserves to get capital goods and other things that are needed in an economy. So that's why we seek to achieve a balance between exports and imports because of the negative effects on the foreign exchange reserves. So the external balance is a key concern for an economy. So those are the objectives or goals of macroeconomic theory in an economy. Now, what is the importance of macroeconomics? Why should we study macroeconomics? Macroeconomics facilitates the estimation of the gross national product. That is what we called the GNP, which aids in the analysis of the economy's performance. So you have heard of economic growth. So we normally have economic surveys every year. And uh, we normally use quite a number of data to determine whether the economy has grown or not. Now, under the macroeconomics, we'll be able to estimate the gross national product. So we'll be able to tell whether the economy has grown or it has contracted. So we'll discuss some of the approaches to the measurement of national product or the GNP. So in simple terms, macroeconomics helps you to estimate the gross national product. So in order to measure whether we are experiencing an economic growth or not. It also facilitates the study of the nature and the size of welfare of the society, the material welfare of the society. Now, you will not be able to know 
the material condition of the society or people without studying macroeconomics. So you'll be able to know how to measure the size of the material welfare of that society. Then the knowledge of macroeconomics is also important in economic policy formulation by government. So we have technocrats in the governments who have studied economics and they are responsible for policy formulations. So there's a number of policies that are formulated by the government and implemented. So you may not be in a position to formulate those policies without studying macroeconomics. Macroeconomics also predicts the impact of exogenous variables on the endogenous variables. Now, we have talked about aggregate variables. For example, we have consumption. We have private consumption, and we also have public consumption. So we also have exports and imports. So we have interest rates. Those are some of the variables that may affect income. So we can treat income as endogenous variables. So the endogenous variables, in other terms, they are the dependent variables. The endogenous variables depend on others. So we want to understand, for example, how consumption affects income. So we can use the macroeconomic models that we have discussed earlier to predict how the income changes as consumption changes. So in as much as we have discussed the importance of macroeconomics, there are quite a number of limitations of macroeconomics. Now, among the limitations, macroeconomic theory treats the aggregates, which it deals with as internally homogeneous. So the aggregates it is about in inflation, interest rates, exchange rates, those are the variables or the aggregates that it deals with. So it overlooks the significance of the internal composition and the structure of such variables. So for example, consumption. So it simply assumes consumption as a uniform word variable in the economy. But we know we have different compositions of what consumption. So we have the private consumption, we have the government consumption, and we also have consumption on capital equipment, consumption on goods and services. So that one is ignored. It also tends to make generalizations about the whole economy based on a small samples. Yet the small sample may not be accurate or accurately reflect the overall picture. Now, we normally study samples because it may not be possible to study the whole economy. So, because of that, we normally do what we call inferential statistics. So, inferential statistics is where you study a sample. And then from the findings of that sample, you use it to make uh, a generalization about the whole world population. So under macroeconomics, we also do the same. We study samples, and then from the results we get from those samples, we use them to make uh, a broad generalization about the economy. So studying the samples, they may have some 
limitations because sometimes those samples may not reflect accurately the overall picture of the economy. Now, the other limitation that we can discuss is that the aggregate, but the aggregates which we normally study may not be functionally related. And in such a case, the macroeconomic policies that are formulated will be erroneous. So we study, for example, the interest rates, we study consumption. And uh, we may want to do a study on how the interest rates influence what? Consumption. So probably the interest rates may not be related to consumption. And if we formulate policies based on an assumption that the interest rates are related with what? Consumption, then those policies are likely to be erroneous. Lastly, the aggregate models that may be derived to explain the behavior of the economy may end up not conforming to the real world. A number of models are normally developed which will assist in understanding the behavior of this. Some of those models may not be as accurate as expected. Now, that is a brief introduction. That's a brief introduction to the macroeconomics. Now, the floor is open for any question or clarification on the introduction part of this topic one. Now you can ask your questions. I hope you can hear me. Amina Abdallah, can you ask your concern? You can unmute your mic and ask. I hope everyone can hear me. Anne Maina. And Maina, you can ask a question. Brenda. Brenda Mutil. Kipian Mwende. Okay, James. Joseph, sorry. Joseph, James. Juliana. Sahara. Ofio Lihanda. Okay. So for any question or concern, you can use the public chat. Uh, you can type your question there if you cannot ask. So, it, but it is good to unmute your mic and then ask your question so that we can discuss the question.
Now that was a brief introduction to macroeconomics. I'm waiting for your questions.